Hey, I'm Rob from EastCoastLongboarding.com, and today we're going to be making some awesome sliding gloves, similar to Loaded's race sliding gloves. So Loaded's race gloves are actually over $90, including shipping to my house. So I decided, since uh, my old gloves here are getting pretty beat, rips right here, you know, I had to tape it up all over the place. These I actually made myself as well. They turned out pretty good, but these were $5 gloves from, um, from like Home Depot or something. So, decided I wanted to make these loaded gloves, so I looked on Amazon, I got this package today. On Amazon.com, these motorcycle racing gloves were $30. They have, um, same like Kevlar knuckle support as the um, the loaded gloves. They're um, got breathable mesh and everything. They're pretty pretty sweet looking gloves, and hopefully they're gonna do the trick. Now, if you wanna uh, look at this link here, right at the bottom, if you click on that link. Actually, you probably can't click on it. I'll have it in the description. Um, you can find the link to these exact gloves on Amazon. I'd recommend getting a size bigger. Than, um, than you think you might be. I have bought extra large size gloves and they're still a little tighter on my fingers. My hands aren't, you know, any bigger than ordinary hands. So I would probably go a size up. And uh, now I'm gonna show you how to turn these into loaded sliding gloves for probably about less than $40. So half the price of the loaded gloves, we're gonna do it. So after using uh, this first pair of sliding gloves for a while, I've learned a few things. Um, first is that the the thumb puck isn't um, isn't too necessary. There's hardly any wear on it. Maybe just a little bit um, along this edge, but uh, it's not too bad. Also, you don't need um, this finger puck. I'm going to just do a straight across puck, just like on the loaded gloves. I also um, found out that these sliding pucks I use just a cutting board from Kmart. And they held up awesome. But the only thing is, um, I used a blowtorch and melted them on. And they've held up perfectly like that. But I've, I just sort of did that because um, these were kind of throwaway gloves to begin with. But with these new, uh, with the Kevlar and the leather and everything, I'm going to use Velcro and have um, removable pucks like the loaded ones so that I um, can always replace them. And, uh, you know, hopefully I'll have these gloves for the rest of my longboarding career if they hold up. So, we'll see how it works. What you're going to need is your gloves, some dark colored thread and a needle, your Velcro, which has an adhesive, but I think the thread will, um, you know, sewing it on there will make it a little bit stronger, and um, your cutting board, as well as some tools. You can either use a scroll saw, a band saw, a jigsaw, or just a hacksaw if you don't have any of them. Alright, to make the sliding puck, the main puck for your um, for the palm of this glove, we're going to use a shape of a circle. I'm taking a solo a red cup here, um, which is about four inches in diameter, and we're going to put that down on our cutting board. Right there. Take a sharpie, a small sharpie. And we'll trace this out. And uh, that'll turn out pretty good. As you can see with this cutting board, um, this costs less than 10 bucks. And I'm going to have enough for two whole pairs of slide gloves. So, you know, five bucks for Velcro, five bucks for half of a cutting board, plus 30 bucks for the glove. I'm talking 40 bucks for this glove, a $90 glove. So, great value here. Now let's go do some cutting. So like I said earlier, you're going to need some tools for this job. <clears throat> you can use a hacksaw, a jigsaw, a scroll saw, which we have right here, or what I'm going to use today is a band saw, which will cut through these sliding pucks really easily. The cutting board um, is probably a little bit easier to cut than wood even, so it would be a pretty good tool for the job. Now if you have a tool like this at home, you should probably make sure you ha know how to use it or have someone help you out with using it. I'm not responsible for uh, if you injure yourself. So let's 
get started, we have our cutting board here with our slide pucks cut out or drawn out. We're going to cut them, cut them out. All right, so there you have it. I'm done. I have all my shapes, but I have all these, you know, little plastic pieces all over the outside here. The edges aren't too clean. But uh, at home, if you guys have like a file or some sandpaper, you can clean that up. It really doesn't matter because as soon as you start sliding, it's gonna, you know, slide right off to begin with. But um, I have a tool here today, um, sander that I'm gonna use. So I uh, will sand up the edges, make them look pretty nice, and um, they look good. This is a good size. It's gonna be uh, pretty good. Do it like that. Alright, so this step is totally optional, but um, we have a sander here. You could also use just a, like a handheld belt sander as well. But uh, this will just clean up the edges real nice, so let me do this real quick. Okay, so I finished up my pucks. I have my gloves here. I want to do it something uh, like that. And I don't know, cover all my fingers. So I got a good slide platform there. Um, and uh, cut these off. All right, so I'm going to start off here with um, one piece of Velcro. I didn't buy a whole lot of Velcro, so I'm gonna use it sparingly. Use um, the soft side on the glove, and we'll use the plastic side on the slide puck. I don't know if how if that's how Loaded does it. Be good if it. It probably is the same way they do it. Actually, I'm pretty sure it is, because um, then you can interchange it with loaded slide pucks if you um, want to upgrade to them from your cutting board. So we're going to start off, cut these in half, because um, we'll use half of one on the glove and half of the other on the puck. So make sure you get a good half slice. It's perfect right there. We'll do something like, um, like this, put it right in the middle. I was thinking um, to make it nicer just to follow these lines and have this whole section Velcro. Um, but unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot of Velcro, so I'm going to have it just like that. I mean, it's just as functional. And then um, we'll have one piece of the other side right in the middle of this. And I was also thinking maybe to have this whole thing covered eventually in Velcro. So you can sort of adjust the puck on the glove as needed. But for now, We'll just do half a piece. This is something that could easily be um, added if I wanted to go back to Home Depot, buy another pack of Velcro. All right, cool. Got two squares, two squares. And um, I'm also thinking about putting a strip of Velcro on this finger, strip on this finger, and then use this two strips, put it on right there. You can take it off to move your fingers. Pretty good stuff. Um, see how it turns out. Now look at that. Two pieces, they line up, stick them on. Look at that. Stick this one on. And there you have it. One sliding glove so far. And this will come right off if you want to use your fingers. And I'm probably going to have this kind of shifted over so I can protect my pinky a little bit in there too. So then when I'm sliding, be good. Now I'm just going to do this with the second glove. And I'll show you when I'm done. All right, so I'm gonna save the sewing idea for another day. I don't think that, um, I actually think this, Velc this adhesive on the back of the Velcro is sticking pretty well for now, but um, <clears throat> we'll see if it, uh, if it holds up and I'll let you know as like a, an add-on to this video. I'll post a comment or add to the description. Um, and uh, check them out. So I made one other modification to the gloves that I uh, didn't show you in the video. I added some Velcro onto the thumb and I uh, made a thumb tuck here. Just a little circle. 
with Velcro all in the back. So goes on like that. This puck goes on like that. Oh, I also added some Velcro onto the pinky so you can spread that across better. And that's the glove right there. Got the carbon fiber for the knuckles. Got it all. It's almost like the loaded glove. We'll see how it holds up though. We'll definitely uh, update this um, this video to have my my reaction after a couple weeks, maybe a month of use with these gloves. And um, without further ado, let's try them out. All right, so I did one more modification. I uh, extended the Velcro down the glove like this so that um, I have a little bit more of a wrist support. I got this advice from somebody on Silverfish. Uh, it's pretty good advice. You just put your puck down more where you're actually putting your weight, and that uh, provides a much better, sturdier platform where you won't rip up your glove as much. So I'd recommend doing that. And uh, I just went out for a little session. It's pretty awesome. And what's great is if you're doing a lot of Coleman's on your left hand, all you got to do if your left handed pucks start wearing out, flip them over to your right hand. And uh, you can really have a nice even wear on all of your pucks. So, pretty awesome. Check out eastcoastlawnboarding.com for do-it-yourself product review and trick tip videos, as well as our hill finder.